Okay guys, now that we've got the, uh, the base and the uh, top supports all finished in mortars, uh, now it's time to move on to the legs. So uh, what we got is uh, we've got the legs all squared up but they're all cut long. So what we need to do is uh, square up one end and uh, then flip it over and uh, cut it to length allowing for the tenons. Uh, the mortises are two inches deep so we're going to make our tenons a little bit over an inch and seven eighths long. Uh, that's to allow for a little bit of hydro pressure down in the bottom for a place for some of the glue to go so that you don't get uh, uh, hydraulic pressure from too much glue and not enough space and pushing the uh, tenon back out. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, cut to length and uh, move on to the next step. So we want to make sure that when we flip it over, we keep the same side referenced. I did check all these, and they are all perfectly square, but I still like to use the same reference face. Uh, our length, including the tenons here, is 36 and an eighth. So what I'm doing is marking it on the uh, top front face, which when I flip it over, will end up being the bottom face, and that's how I will uh, line it up with the saw blade. And because I'm using a zero clearance, insert here on my table saw, it's real easy to go ahead and just line my mark up with the uh, kerf in the insert. And then go ahead and make the cuts. Alright, it's as easy as that. So there's one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these other three legs sized up and then we'll move on to cutting the tenons. Alright guys, time to cut the tenons. I've uh, got the saw all set up. I did a test cut with one of the off cuts from one of the legs. Uh, lots of ways to cut tenons. We could certainly uh, mark the shoulders with a marking knife and a square or a, uh, or a scribe knife and then go ahead and cut them by hand. Uh, this is really hard wood that'll take a little bit of time. I've got the table saw here. Uh, what I've done is I've installed a three-quarter inch spacer which allows me to have a little bit of space for clearance on the fence and what I've done is I've moved the fence over an extra three-quarters of an inch and I've got the blade all set up so then I'm left with a half inch tenon which is the mortises that we've cut. So let's go ahead let's batch cut these all and uh, once we get uh, one side finished, we'll reset up the depth of cut uh, with the exact same shoulder length to, uh, to get the other sides of the cheeks and then we will uh, go from there. Now that we've got the, those sides cut, we're going to flip it over, we're going to lower the blade down so that we have a two inch long tenon and uh, get the rest of those cut.
All right, let's cut some tenons. I've got the uh, two inch by half inch tenon laid out on the end grain here. Uh, we're just going to do these by hand with a handsaw. Uh, I've got my uh, uh, Kmart special <laughs> basically. This is a uh, uh, a tenon saw, short tenon saw that I picked up at a garage sale. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. It's a uh, Distin. It's the last year they were making them uh, from 1947 to 1955. Most people will tell you to stay away from these, which is ridiculous. The plate steel's fine. The handles aren't too great. Sometimes you just reshape them to fit your hand. That's kind of what I did with this. Uh, I cleaned it up, de rusted it, re cleaned up the plate, and uh, you know, refiled it. And uh, this is honey locust, so uh, let's see how it cuts. What I like to do is cut down the line from one side, establish my cut curve, and then start working down this side. And I've got a line going down for layout. So what we do is we cut uh, basically on the triangle, on the angle, then we pop, pop over to the other side, get this side going, just get the curve going. This one's really hard, so you got to give it a couple of pull-throughs to get your plate going. Now we've got our line established. You know, basically what you're trying to do with the saw is just split the line. Leave a little lead, take a little away. And if you're going to err on the side of caution, leave a little extra, you can always come back with a sharp chisel or a shoulder plane and clean it up. Or a rasp, or a file, or a float. Lots of ways to skin the cat. there a little I'm just correcting there we go so once you saw down to the shoulder on one side I like to see what I'm doing if this is not a critical cut you don't have to do this you can just go right through but since we are making cuts to a line flip it around got a pencil around here somewhere Curve's already established, so we just take our line, extend it down to the shoulder on both sides with a square, and that gives us our reference line on the back side, which is now the front side to follow. And we've already got our kerf established, and what that kerf does is that keeps the plate straight. And now you don't have the tendency to wander on the back side. This is how you make much cleaner, straighter cuts on things like tenons where it really matters. Because the plate will want to follow in the curve that's already cut. And as you can see, you just go ahead and rip it straight down. Do the other side. These old saws are good saws. And once you learn how to file them, keep them sharp, which is really easy to do. It's about as difficult as sharpening a chisel. And once you get that done, you just move on to the next one. Now what we got to do is cut the short sides. So we've cut away our lines, so let's get those back. I've got a combination square to fit above the shoulder. Just mark my lines. I know I'm working on the back side here, but I got to be able to see, guys. Trust me, we're cutting to a line. <laughs> Most of the time. Get your curve started.
gouge out that shoulder too bad. Stuff is like granite, so we're doing good. And that's it. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the uh, base uh, basically dry fitted here. I've got the, all the uh, mortises done, all the tenons cut and fitted in. Uh, basically, uh, after hand cutting all the uh, tenons, what I basically did is took a shoulder plane and uh, cleaned them up just enough to get them to fit nice and snug. Basically, you don't want a loose fit. You basically want sort of like a, uh, a resisted piston fit. And uh, once you get the glue in there, that's going to swell up nice and make a nice tight joint. And we're going to pin all these anyway. We're going to drill a, uh, a bore through each of the tenons and uh, pin them. I've got some walnut uh, doll, doll stock uh, s sitting around, so I will pin all the tenons with that. Uh, next up, we need to run the stretchers across. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to very easily move this entire uh, grinding stand around with my pallet jack. It's pretty much how I move all my machines. So uh, what I'm going to do is get these stretchers running across uh, to be just high enough underneath three and a half inches up off the uh, floor to the bottom of the stretcher so that I can get my pallet jack underneath there. And that will also give me another shelf area. And I'm going to eventually build uh, probably a storage box of some sort uh, underneath here for tool storage. Uh, probably uh, grinder belts and uh, uh, the extra grinding discs and stuff that I have. It'll all go uh, right under here so it's all one self-contained unit. So what I've got here is I've got this uh, basic <laughs> hunk of red oak that I've had forever. Uh, believe it or not, this board is uh, 12 inches wide. It used to be about a, uh, 12 feet long and slowly but surely over the years I have been hacking away at this. I make all my zero clearance inserts uh, out of the oak that's from this board and uh, I basically got about a five foot length uh, left here. Uh, based on my measurements, uh, these uh, stretchers need to be a little bit over 34 inches long, including the two inch tenons for each side. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get that out of here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rough cut it to the, with the, to the bandsaw to size. Then we're going to go ahead and joint one side uh, on the joiner, uh, run it through the planer to thickness, and I'm basically just going to leave them as thick as I possibly can. Right now, this piece is an inch and an eighth. We'll probably get somewhere around a little over an eighth, uh, a little over an inch thick for it. And uh, then we'll uh, go ahead and take this apart and uh, get the mortises uh, uh, drilled in with the mortising machine again on uh, all four of the legs, and uh, we'll uh, get this uh, grinder stand put together. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and move over to the bandsaw and get this board cut off. Okay, so after a quick reevaluation of that piece of oak that I had, uh, I was able to determine that there were a couple of uh, pretty good sized knots going through the board right in the way of, uh, right where the tenons would go, and I don't want to have a, a weak joint there. So I went ahead, grabbed a different piece of wood, I found a piece of ash uh, that I had cut last year, it's dry now. Uh, this is six quarter, so uh, plenty thick enough. I actually uh, cut this off of a board. Uh, I ran it through the bandsaw to get a straight edge on both ends, uh, reasonably straight, and now we're going to go ahead. Uh, this is rough sawn, so we're going to go ahead and process it by starting out with uh, flattening it on the joiner and then planing it to thickness over on the uh, planer. So let's get started with that.